Hey everybody, Patton here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play Nintendo DS games on your mini system. Pretty simple process, no BIOS files are needed, and games run pretty well with this system, as long as you aren't playing something that requires specific NDS hardware. Before we get started, a quick recap on how to mod your mini in HackGCE. You want to go to the kernel tab, then install repair. Click yes on the next window, plug your mini system into your PC while holding reset, power on, and HackG will do the rest. Once you see the green light in the bottom left corner, you are good to go. First thing we want to do is go to the modules tab and the KMFD mod hub. The core we're going to be using is actually standalone and we're not going to use RetroArch for it. So we want to go to the KMFD cores tab. Scroll down till you get to the Nintendo section and you have three to choose from. If you choose Melon DS or DES MUME, you will need RetroArch to get these to run, but I do not recommend it because they do not run the games very well at all. Instead, we're looking for Drastic. It runs the games extremely well. Highlight the core, then click Download Module. Close out the Mod Hub, go back to your Modules tab, and install extra modules. Put a check mark next to Drastic, then click OK. Once the core is installed, you'll get this done message. To add your games, just highlight them, drag them directly into HackG. On the next screen that pops up, it's asking you to associate a core with these games. So highlight your games again, click Nintendo DS, then select the core you picked before. Again, I recommend Drastic. Click Apply, then Close. And now our command line has been changed, and for some games you will get the box art and description automatically. On other games, this doesn't happen. So to get your box art, right click the game, go to Scrape Selected Games. Select your game over on the right side, then click OK when you're done. The last step is to hit the Synchronize Selected Games with Mini button at the bottom right or export to USB if you're using external storage. And that's all there is to it. If you're having any issues getting this to work, you can go to the Rock and the Classics Discord server or subreddit for help. The biggest hurdle you're going to have with these games is getting a controller that will work and function like a DS. Once again, the best option is to get the Wii Classic controller. It works right out of the box, you don't have to set anything up, and it feels almost natural to use this controller. If you don't have a Wii Classic controller, you can plug a second controller into the two-player spot and mess with the controls that way for some of the features. If you're using just one NES controller or one Genesis Mini controller, you're kind of out of luck. Let's head over to the SNES Classic and take a look. We're going to start off with Mario Kart DS. And the game loaded up just fine. Controls are working nice. Let's get into the game and see how it runs. And as you can see, this runs really well. It's very smooth. All the controls work on the controller. I am using the Wii Classic controller for this demonstration. Now, because this game doesn't run with RetroArch, you won't have the RetroArch menu to change some options. Instead, you want to hit the down and select button to get into the menu. In this menu, you can change the options, configure your controls, mess with some cheats, under change options, you have different frame skips that you can change, the screen orientation between vertical and horizontal, how much you want to scale the screen, swap the screens, and other options you can see here. If you're not using the Wii Classic controller, this is the only way to change these options. And any options that you change that you like, you want to save it at the bottom here, either for one specific game or for all games. Now with the Wii Classic controller, if you use the left analog stick, you can see we have a little stylus that we can use on the screen. If you push the ZL button, that is like pressing the stylus against the screen. If you hit the ZR button, it will zoom in to your main screen. So you don't have to play with both screens at the same time. When using the two controller method, you can use the D-pad on the second controller to use the stylus and the different buttons on the controller to push in the stylus and change your screens. Start up Pokemon Heart Gold real quick. Once again, it starts up fine. And again, with the classic controller, if you hit ZR, you can zoom into the top screen. And there you have it. Once again, if you need any help getting this to work, you can go to the Rock and the Classics Discord server or subreddit for help. And that's all I have for you guys. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.